So these are my top 10 uh, favorite Habs centers from 1963 to 2019, but it's really, I don't have anybody past uh, 2009. So uh, it, it's not a knock on uh, Domi, KK, or Dano. It's just that they're a little too new for this list. Okay, so hey everyone, uh, this is the uh, third video of five of my top 10 Montreal Canadiens by position in my lifetime. So today we're looking at centers, and these are my favorite centers since 1963, and that's right here at Talking Habs with Rick. That's me. I've got 50 years of loving the Habs. If you love them like I do, subscribe and ring the notifications bell. Uh, to get all my videos, live streams, contests, and podcast news. And guess what? They're all dedicated to the Habs and all things hockey. And leave any comments in the comment section down below. So these are my top 10 Montreal Canadian centers. Um, I was born in 1963, so it's since 1963. Um, what did I want to say about that? Uh, I, you know what? Just blanked out, but they're my top 10. Um, they're all great centers. Um, I don't think there's any... Well, I, in the list, if you look at the list of Canadian centers, I, I, I guess I don't really have any of these quirky little favorites. But uh, these are the top 10 that I enjoyed watching, um, that made big contributions to the team, to winning, to uh, cups, except I don't know if there were one or two that didn't get any cups. But these are my 10 favorites. Number 10 is Pierre LaRouche. Pierre LaRouche, number 10. Now, uh, in 1978, during the season, uh, Montreal traded uh, Peter Mahovlich to Pittsburgh Penguins in return for Pierre LaRouche, who had a 53-goal, 100-11-point I think 11 point season with Pittsburgh. Um, Mahovlich, I guess, was on the beginning of his downward... Well, he had just had two great seasons... Uh, Maybe not the season they traded, but the year... I think, actually, the two previous years, or two of the three previous years to that. And uh, it was just, I guess, a business, and uh, I believe it was Pollock then, and he was just looking for a f another 50-goal scorer, which he found in LaRouche, because LaRouche hit 50 goals in... Uh, I don't remember what year, but he did. He hit 50 goals for Montreal. Uh, he was also the only... He's also the only player to score at least 45 goals for three teams. He hit 50 for Montreal, 53 with Pittsburgh, and 48 in New York for the Rangers. In 1974, as a junior, he scored 94 goals, 157 assists, which is still, I think, a record in the QMJHL, for 251 points. A hell of an offensive player. Uh, he won two cups with Montreal in 78 and 79. He was the first player to score 50 with two teams. And that's um, Montreal and Pittsburgh. And he has a uh, Habs record for goals for a season for a center with 50. So he's the only center to score 50 for Montreal. LaRouche was a, wasn't a really big guy, but really talented, good hands. Uh, typical Montreal Canadiens player of the time. They brought him in, and he just fit in perfectly. Um, didn't stay as long as, uh, I guess he was here four years or part of four years and a bit of, I think it's four years, five years. Five years, excuse me. Uh, he had 812 games played, 395 goals, 427 assists for 822 points. Almost a, a little over a point a game player for his career, which is damn good. So Pierre LaRouche, um, I'm trying to remember his style of play. I should have watched some uh, replays, but he was a really good little center. Um, he really fit the mold of the Habs at the time. So Pierre LaRouche, number 10. I'm running long already. Number nine, Denny Savard. Denny Savard, number nine. Denny Savard uh, was drafted in 1980. Habs had first overall pick in 1980. Should have drafted Denny Savard. They chose Doug Wickenheiser instead. No knock on Wickenheiser, but it was a mistake. Um, he came here in 91-93 towards the end of his career. He had, in his career, 1,196 games, 473 goals, 865 assists. For 1,338 points. One hell of an offensive player. So he was here at the end of his career. He should have been the first pick. Did that. Uh, he had 75 points for Chicago as a rookie. Um, hang, I have a signed hockey card. Now, I didn't get this. My wife got this for me at uh, an event she was at that he was there. So I got two, signed, two cards signed by Denny Savard. 
I don't know if you can make out the signature too well. Um, he sort of, well, I should, I say he sort of won the cup with Montreal in 93. He did, but he was injured during the playoffs. He went behind the bench for the last few games when they won the cup. So he did win the cup with Montreal. I don't know why I say sort of. He played 63 games, I think. Uh, it was his last season here. Uh, he was known for the spinorama. Serge Savard invented that. It was known as the Savardian spinorama. So I guess as a kid, he practiced it because his name was Savard. And yeah, he became well known for that. He'd skate in across the line, usually stop somewhere up on uh, top of the faceoff circle or that area on the side and do a spinorama, wait for the other guys to catch up and make a play. Um, definitely liked Denny Savard a lot. I wished he was here for his whole career because that would have made. It would have been unbelievable. There were some lean years there where we could have used a guy like Savard. So, Denny Savard, one of my top ten of Montreal, number nine of my top ten favorite centers in Montreal. Number eight is Bobby Smith. Bobby Smith, number eight. Okay, so Bobby Smith came here. He was acquired from the North Stars in 1984. He stayed here till 1990. He played in his career 1,077 games, 357 goals, 679 assists for 1,036 points. Very close to a point-a-game player for his career. That's great. He was an invaluable piece of the 1986 Cup win. He was a tall, six foot four, 210-pound, lanky uh, kind of a, a center. Um, I don't really remember anything that he did, uh, flies are around again, anything he did specifically that he was just a great, solid hockey player. Um, imagine he had a good shot, I just, I don't remember. In, when he was in the QMJHL, he led the league with 192 points his last season, beating Wayne Gretzky by 10. He was the first overall pick in 1978 for the North Stars. He had 93 points here in 1988. He, uh, he said he, uh, he was a Calder winner in 1979 for the North Stars. Yeah, I'm going all over the board. Bobby Smith was one of, uh, he just was a great player. Um, uh, he was definitely a big part of that 86 win. I'm blanking I'm blanking on these guys. You know, it's a long time ago. I should have watched, I should have watched highlights. Uh, not as easy to find good highlights, though, for these older players. But anyways, Bobby Smith, number eight, a truly great hockey player. And number eight on my list for uh, Canadian centers. Going to take a minute here, hopefully less than that, to talk about TubeBuddy. If you're a game, um, if you're a video creator, uh, live streamer, vlogger, or gamer, give TubeBuddy a try. On Chrome, Foxfire, or Safari, I use TubeBuddy every day here on YouTube, and I'll tell you, I couldn't do this without TubeBuddy. For really good uh, thumbnails, um, I'm lost here now. Jeez. Uh, thumbnails SEO, which is search engine optimization, and uh, there was something else. Oh, their analytics, like when you're on uh, uh, watching a video, you get to see all the stats for the channel, all the kind of really good analytics. Helps you to search for titles. It's really, really good. Try it out. It's free, and the great thing about that is that you never have to upgrade that. You never have to upgrade the free version. They have three other versions that are paid. They're really good. Give you more options for each version. And I'll tell you, if you're trying to uh, start a channel, make it grow, TubeBuddy is, is, for me, a necessity. So TubeBuddy, a basic, uh, I wrote here, a basic essential for me. It's uh, not that basic. I pay for it, but I can't do my thumbnails without it. That I got to tell you. So TubeBuddy, I'm running too long. Try it. Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. I think I forgot to say, there's a link in the description below for TubeBuddy. Number seven is Vinny Donfus. Vinny Donfus, number seven. My cousin Vinny. That's what we used to call him sometimes after the movie came out. So Vinny Donfus, he started out in Toronto, uh, got traded to Edmonton for one season, and then we acquired him in exchange for Shane Corson, and I'm going to just do a little... My Shane, I didn't do it in the other video. This is my Shane Corson signed. I love Shane Corson. He was great. I mean, not a truly great, great all-time hab, but he was a really good fan favorite hab. Okay, Vinny Donfus. He uh, was traded in 93, and he was here till 1999. He played 1,378 games in his career, 432 goals, 773 assists for 1,205 points. 
He was captain for four seasons from 96 to 99. So that means he was the captain of the... Nope, wrong about this. He did not win a cup here. Um, I'm thinking of somebody else. He had 97 points. Uh, and I forgot to write the year. At one In one season, I used to uh, make deliveries to his... Uh, I'm reading by the way, bullet points. To his uh, brother. He was a dentist in Ville d'Anjou when I was doing deliveries. Uh, he had all kinds of pictures of Dafus up on the wall. Um, he, he scored his only 40-goal season here in Montreal. I think that's a, a rumor that people think he scored in Toronto, a 40-goal season. He had 38 goals, I believe, one, no, 33 in Toronto was his highest. He scored 38 for Edmonton, and he had 40 and 38 here, and I believe 39. So he had three seasons of 38, 39, 40 here. Um... Won the cup in 93. Uh, yeah, I should have said that. He wasn't the captain, though. So he was cup winner in 93 his first season. And an integral part, I think, um, a very integral part, even though I think he was only here for part of the season, most of the season. So Vinny Donfus, I'm bumbling my way through Vinny Donfus, but he's number seven in my all-time favorite centers for the Montreal Canadiens in my lifetime. Number six, Pete Mahovlich. Pete Mahovlich, number six. Pete Mahovlich was a really good, a really good center and probably underrated. Um, I know we, we used to, when we were kids, we used to make a little fun of him. He was kind of goony looking, I guess. I don't know. It's not fair, but he was a really good hockey player. Uh, he came here from Detroit in 1970. I forget who we traded him for. Traded for. Oh, that's a different trade. Uh, he stayed here till 1978, where he was traded for Pierre Larouche. He had 884 games played in his career, 288 goals, 485 assists for 773 points. Pretty damn good. He's the younger brother of the Big M, Frank Mahovlich, um, who also played in Detroit. And I think for Toronto, um, no, Pete didn't play for Toronto. Uh, I, the reason we used to call him a goon, the new, famous New Year's Eve game uh, against the Russians in 1975. I just, I remember him coming out on the ice and going, mm. it just seemed kind of goony to me. And I guess that always stuck in my head, but he was a really good hockey player. Um, he had 34 plus goals five times. He had 117 and 105 points respectively in 75 and 76. 82 assists in 1975. He played in the Canada-USSR Summit Series in 1972. I don't think a lot of people know that. Um, second overall pick by Detroit in 1963. And just a really good big guy. He was a big guy. Good, solid hockey player. Tip, um, typical Canadians hockey player. Uh, I don't know what I mean by that. But just good, talented, can score, playmaker. Good all-around hockey player. They traded him in 78 to get Pierre LaRouche, as I said before, and to keep that going. So, um, Peter Mahovlich, number six, number six in my all-time favorite centers for the Montreal Canadiens. Number five, Guy Carboneau. Guy Carboneau, number five. Guy Carboneau was here from 1983 to 1994. In his career, he played 1,318 games. 260 goals, 403 assists for 663 points. And that's not bad for a defensive defenseman. A lot of people don't know this. He was a scoring center in junior and the AHL. His last year in junior, he had 72 games played, 72 goals, 110 assists for 182 points. That's from Guy Carboneau I'm talking about. A lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that exactly until not too long ago. He centered the Ganey Nylon. Uh, well, he centered Ganey and Nylon uh, for many years. He took over, I believe, from Doug Jarvis uh, in that role. Um, he had 20 plus goals five times in his career. Not surprising when you know he was such a scorer in junior. He is entering the Hall of Fame this year. He was a Cup winner in '86 and '93 when he was the captain in '93. He captained the team from 1990 to 1994, and he was traded mostly because he gave a reporter that, I don't want to do it and get in trouble, I don't know if you're getting in trouble for that, uh, on a golf course who was kind of hounding him, 
and eventually he just gave him the middle finger while the guy snapped a picture of it that went kind of viral in the day and uh, next thing you know Guy Carboneau traded for Jim Montgomery to St. Louis who's Jim Montgomery? So Guy Carboneau was a really good good solid player here great player deserved of the Hall of Fame nomination or election uh, and he is number five on my list of top ten centers for the Montreal Canadiens in my lifetime. Next one up, my favorite of all time, number four, Saku Koivu. Saku Koivu, number four. He's my favorite. I don't list him as number one for one. Only one reason is that he he didn't win a Stanley Cup here. Not really his fault. It was a crappy team here, and the three above him are just too great to say that. He's ahead of that. So, Saku Koivu, my number four. He, he arrived here in 1996 uh, season, 95-96 season. He stayed till 2009. He was the captain for 10 years, 99 to 2009. He holds that title with Jean Beliveau as the longest-serving captain of the Habs ever. 1,124 games played, 255 goals, 577 assists for 832 points. And that's not bad for a guy who was injured a lot. Um, he was almost as classy as Belleville. If, if all the captain or captains of this team, and he's here as a center right now, he was a very classy guy. He had an 18-year career, tremendous compete level. In his second year, he had that famous injury, Jim Cummings, took out his knee, and he was never really the same. Uh, his numbers were good still, but imagine the numbers he would have had if he didn't have that, because that became a chronic injury for him. Ah, uh, let's see, I said that. He had no cup wins. He's my favorite captain of all time. And in 2002, he had uh, lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, cancer. He came back for three games at the end of the season, led them into the playoffs against the Bruins. They won that series. Um, amazing. That, that was amazing for what he went through and that he came back and then played so many years and he was really good after that. 2006-7, he had a career high 75 points, 22 goals, 53 assists. He didn't speak any French in public till very late in his career when he was getting reamed for it. Um, and he f said a few things. In 2005-2006, uh, the year the Hurricanes won the uh, Stanley Cup, Justin Williams, trying to lift his stick, lifted it too high and caught his stick in Saku Koibu's eye. Another injury. We're out of the playoffs after that. So, And it was a good year. We were looking good that year. So Saku Koivu, so many things to say about Saku. Great little player. Compete level through the roof. Talented, playmaker, great guy. Everybody loves Saku. Um... Yeah, Saku Koivu, number four on my list of top ten centers in my lifetime. Number three, Jacques Lemaire. Jacques Lemaire, number three. Jacques Lemaire, known as the mayor. That's his name, Le Maire. That's mayor in French, Maire. So, he's just known as the mayor. A great player. Uh, he played here from 1967 to 1979. He played his whole NHL career here. 853 games, 366 goals, 469 assists, 835 points. Uh, he went into the Hall of Fame in 1984. He had 12, all his 12 seasons in the NHL, he had 20 plus goals with a career high of 44 in 1973. He was a great player, a great coach. Uh, although a lot of people didn't like his trap style, but a great defensive coach. He won some cups. He was a 40-goal scorer the once, as I said. He centered Lafleur and Shutt for many years. That was a one hell of a line, uh, especially those four cups in a row. Uh, he won eight Stanley Cups, and he scored in two of those Stanley Cup finals. He scored the winning goal in 77 and 79. So Jacques Lemaire, not a flashy player, just a solid just a solid, good, one of those, I guess this is what I mean by typical Canadians player. Not the star, but that solid, offensive force. Jacques Lemaire, number three on my top ten Montreal Canadian centers in my lifetime. Number two, Henri Richard. Henri Richard, number two, the pocket rocket. Younger brother to Maurice the Rocket Richard. 
uh, just another great player. Played here from 1956 to 1975. 1,256 six games, all with Montreal. 300 and, oh, I don't know if that's a 58. 358 goals, 688 assists, 4,046 points. So he's the pocket rocket. He's the winningest hockey player of all time in that he has 11 Stanley Cup rings as a player. Um... He's the number 29 top 100 greatest players. He had a career high 80 points in 67 games in 1957-58. He was he's a five it was a five foot seven dynamo. So speaking of small players, this guy was unstoppable and a dynamo and very hard to play against. He was tough as nails, like his older brother. Um, he was captain for four seasons from 71 to 75. And I wrote here head coach from 83 to 80. I don't even know why I wrote that. He was not a head coach here. So I must have wrote that about somebody else. Uh, anyway, great player, small guy, uh, just a great player. Uh, he could blow past you. with, And he, apparently he made that same move. He went by on the same side, the same way. And the players of the day would say, nothing you could do about it. Even though you knew where he was going. So Arnie Richard... Truly great player, the pocket rocket, number two on my top ten Montreal Canadiens centers of my lifetime. Number one, of course, Jean Beliveau. Jean Beliveau, Le Gros Bill, number one. Of course, is Jean Beliveau. I mean, he's the greatest, probably the greatest player ever played for the for the organization. For me, Guy Lafleur is number two. Classiest hockey player ever to play the game, Mr. Class. He was that. Ten Stanley Cup rings to go along with ten seasons as the uh, team captain, tied with Saku Koivu. He went into the Hall of Fame in 1972, one year after retirement. He had a 20-year career. He was the fourth player to hit 500 goals. Second player to 1,000 points. First Conn Smythe Trophy winner. Uh, number seven of the best players ever to play the game. By the way, the Conn Smythe Trophy, I guess, was first year was 1965. That's when he wanted. He was the first one. He led the team in penalty minutes three times in the 50s. A stat nobody really, uh, not too many people know. And he won the scoring t championship his only time in 1956. My video is running long, and there's not much else to say about Le Gros Bill, uh, Jean Beliveau. He was the best Montreal Canadiens hockey player by at any position of all time. So that's my list of the top 10 Montreal Canadiens centers in my lifetime. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video, I hope it wasn't too long, give a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. Uh, subscribe and ring the notifications bell, and that's going to let you know of all of my videos. Uh, I don't know why I have to read that. Live streams, contests, and podcasts, for because it's different at the end, for your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge. And join me Saturday nights at 9 p.m. for Hockey Talk live stream, and look for me on Have a Listen podcasts starting this season. I'm not sure exactly what the date is of the first one, and the link is going to be in, is in the description of the show that I was on. And keep the link and just keep, keep checking there. I'll announce it when I'm doing the show. Uh, and check out, oh, if you're interested in the Fantasy Hockey Pool for 2019, go to my Twitter account, at Talking Habs on Twitter. Follow me, and then you can DM me with your email uh, address, and I'll enter you in the draw. And then we'll be drawing, i got uh, 17 spots open. We'll be drawing on a live stream. So that's it. Go Habs, go! Thanks for watching this long video. Bye, y'all.